Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to authenticate your professional or your business email domain with system.io and your domain provider so that your emails get delivered to the inbox of your subscribers. This is not a video on how to assign your domain to system.io for the purposes of sales funnels or for your blogs. If you want to find out how to connect your GoDaddy domain to system.io, go and watch this video. Or alternatively, you can watch this video if you want to connect a Namecheap domain through to system.io. Hi, I'm Brandon, and don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and all important notification bell if you want to get notified every time I upload a new video to this channel. Also, drop me a comment below if this video has provided any value to you, or alternatively, if you have any questions, and I will get back to you. So why do we want to authenticate our email domain when using email marketing? The first benefit is that email authentication provides mailbox providers like Google, Outlook, Yahoo, confidence that the sender of that message is legitimate and is not a bad actor. So the more confidence that these mailbox providers have that your message is legitimate, the more likely they are to deliver it to the inbox of your subscriber. The second benefit is that you've gone to a lot of time, effort and cost to acquire your leads. If your emails are now hitting the spam folder, that is a waste of that time effort. So you want to make sure that those emails get delivered to their inbox. And the third reason is that once your emails start delivering into a spam folder, it is extremely difficult to identify the cause, as well as it is time consuming to improve your email domain score so that your emails start delivering back into an inbox. So you want to get it right from the beginning. That is preferable. So let's get authenticating your domain. The first prerequisite is that you have a system.io account. If you don't have one yet, head down into the description below. I'll have a link where you can go sign up for free. The second prerequisite is that you have an email domain. So what I would suggest is you head on into the description. I'll have a link to the discount page for Namecheap where you are able to go and purchase whatever seasonal discount that they have on their domains. If you don't know how to purchase a domain, I also have a video that you can go and watch that'll explain exactly how you can go about acquiring your domain. Let's go and authenticate that domain. So you head up once signed into system.io, you head up to the little profile picture at the top right over here, the drop down arrow, go select settings. On the left hand side, go and select mail settings. Scroll down, head to domains and select here, click here to authenticate your domain. And here you will enter your domain name. You will exclude the www dot. You don't want that. So for this example, I will use my name domain.com. Go select save. Tell me that the domain has been authenticated. Just refresh this page. And as you scroll down here, it'll tell you that this here's your domain, that its status is currently pending. You'll go and select your DNS settings. And here, system.io will provide you with three C name records that you're going to copy and paste into your domain provider. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you three domain providers on how to set this up. One will be Google Workspace, the other will be Namecheap, and the third will be GoDaddy. So the first one that I am going to demonstrate this with is going to be Namecheap. So once you've logged into Namecheap, if you haven't already, you can head over to the private email on the left-hand side, and you can go and purchase an inbox from Namecheap. This will be attached to your domain, and they are currently running a two-month free trial with them. So you can go make use of that if you have purchased your domain with Namecheap. Right, so let's go back to the domain list and we'll go and select the domain that we are wanting to manage. In this case, it is brandonscheme.com. It'll be your domain. Once you log in, go and select manage and you will then head over to the advanced DNS tab. In there, this is where you are going to be editing your or adding those three CNAME records that system.io have given us. First thing we're going to do is add a new record. And the type of record you want to add is a CNAME record. For the host, you're going to head back to system.io. And what you're going to copy is just the subdomain. So everything to the left of that very first dot, go and copy that. And paste that in at host. At the target, you're going to head over to this particular value. And you're going to copy that. And you're going to paste that into that value over there. Go and select the little tick. That'll add it. Next one, you're going to add a next record. So that is going to be our C, another C name record. For this host, what we're going to do is we are going to do the, exactly the same thing. Highlight everything up until that very first dot. Go and copy that. 
paste it in at host. And for the target, you are going to come over to this value, the second one that correlates to the second target and paste that in. Tick. And we're going to add our third CNAME record. And once again, everything up until just to the left of that first dot, copy that, paste it. And for the target, we'll add that in and go and select the green tick. And if need be, go and select save all changes. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check whether these settings have actually taken effect around the globe. So what we do is we head off to a site called dnschecker.org. And what you're going to put in there is if you head back to these three C name records, this time what you're going to copy is that entire name value. So everything in there from the subdomain, the dot, and then your domain. And you're going to head over to the DNS checker. You're going to place that in in that text field, you're going to change this A record into a C name record, and you're going to go select search. And here you'll start to see whether your record, DNS records have been populated around the globe. So what you want to look for here is, here you see it says inbound.system.io, and if you head back to your dashboard, you'll see that that value is inboundsystem.io. So those two are correlating to one another. You can see you've got some red crosses that but you've also got some green ticks. So the green ticks just means that it is actually working correctly. The red crosses will change to green ticks with time. It can take up to 72 hours for DNS records to propagate around the world. So what we'll do is we'll head back to system.io and we can do the same for the other two records. We head back up to the top, go and paste those in there. Make sure it says C name, go and select search. And here you'll see that that particular name corresponds to that key1.system.io. And if we're going to have a look over there, it's key1.system.io, which you know it's working. And you can do the same for the third one and go and paste that in, go and select search. And here you'll see that that correlates to key2.system.io. So, and yeah, you can see more and more are obtaining the green ticks as they are busy propagating throughout the world. If all of these were red, then what you would want to do is you'd want to go back and make sure that you didn't by accident include the dot after the name when you were adding it as your C record within your DNS zone, or that you weren't selecting this entire name field when you were inputting it into your DNS zone. Just remember that what you need is just this subdirectory portion when you're inputting it into your DNS zone. Now, before we proceed on to the next step of authenticating your domain, I am just going to quickly show you what it'll look like in a GoDaddy DNS zone setting as well as a Google Workspace. So if we head over to GoDaddy and you head and you log into your accounts there, go and select the domain that you are wanting to manage. If you've got multiple of them, once that builds, here's your domain settings, you head over to manage DNS. And here are your DNS records. So once again, you would have the ability to add a new record. You would go and select your type, C name. You would head back over to system.io. You would copy everything just to the left of the period. Go and put that in at the name field, add value, which correlates in this case perfectly to the system IO headings, go and paste it, and you can just leave it as default. You would then go and select either save or add more records, and you would add the other two records within, two, within your DNS zone for GoDaddy. Once that is done, it'll then populate at the bottom over here, and you will then also then follow the same procedure. You'd go to DNS checker and confirm that your DNS settings have been updated. The third option that you've got is that you can go and check in Google Domains. So if you head over, once you've logged into Google Domains, down the left-hand side, there is a DNS option. Go and select DNS. You head down to Manage Custom Records. Go and select that. And you scroll down and you go and select Create a New Record. Then you'd head back over to System.io. Go and copy that subdomain. So that is everything prior to the, the dot. Go and copy that value, head back to Google Domains, paste that value in. Type, you'd go and change that to CNAME record. You can leave the time to live at its default. And this value over here would be, whoops, let's go and copy that value and go and paste it in 
at that point and you would then go and create your next record and you'd go do it for the for the other two records in here as well. Once you've added your three CNAME records to your DNS zone, you'd then head over to dnschecker.org and you'd go and verify that your DNS settings have actually been propagated partway through the world or if not throughout the world. So once you've completed those steps in whichever domain hosting provider that you make use of, you can then head back to system.io. You can now go and close this particular window and you can go and refresh this page again. And let us go and have a look. You'll see here that my domain name is status is currently pending. You can do one of two things. You can email support help desk and I will leave a link in the description below on how to access their email address and request that they verify your domain for you. Or what I've experienced in the past is that within a couple of hours that my domain has actually been verified automatically. There are a couple of other items on this particular field that we can go and update. So the sender email address, this will populate with the email account that you created your system.io account with right in the beginning. So in this case, that would be support at brandonski.com. My sender name would be Brandon or whatever you want to call it. And you can then also set up a test email address. It can be the same as what your sender email address is, or you can create a completely other email address that'll send your test email campaigns or your, or your newsletters to when you start creating those. You can automatically send a test email when saving a newsletter. You can either check that or uncheck it. You can also set up a footer for all of your emails, or you can display your affiliate link for system.io in your emails. You can either check that or uncheck it. And then the last item over here on this page is the unsubscribe link text. And this I suggest that you keep. This will also help your emails get delivered to an inbox. Those mailbox providers will check that there is an unsubscribe link on all of your emails. If you don't have one, they're automatically going to suspect the quality of your email and are less likely to deliver it to your inbox. So definitely leave the unsubscribe there. So if I head up to the top, there's a save option. Go and select save. And we'll just go do a quick refresh one last time. Let's see if it has changed. Our status is still pending. I will send support an email and request that they verify my domain. So it's been about 45 minutes and I've refreshed my page and the status has changed from pending to verified. So as I said, you can either send them an email or you can just wait and the status will probably change provided you've got some green ticks on the dnschecker.org website. And folks, that is how easy it is to authenticate your email domain in system.io. If you want to find out how I use system.io to run my affiliate marketing business, I'll have a link in the description below to both my training or drop me a comment below and I will get back to you with the information. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that all important notification bell. Until the next time, have a great day.